You know, what's weird is commercials for fascism. It'd be great if we lived on one of the earths that didn't have those, but I guess that's not the dimension we wound up with. And look, I've, I've already dedicated two full diatribes to talking about the He Gets Us campaign, so I really didn't expect to make a trilogy out of it this week, but then I saw the fucking Super Bowl ads. This was hardly the first time I'd seen ads from this campaign, right? They're a frequent advertiser during NFL games. Despite my better judgment, I remain an NFL fan. So I thought I knew what to expect out of them. But the ones they played during the Super Bowl deserve special attention. Well, the second one does anyway. The first one was the same manipulative crap they've been disgorging since this campaign started. But the second one was best summarized by New York Congressional Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who described it as an ad to, quote, make fascism look benign, end quote. So in case you didn't watch the Super Bowl or you just timed your piss breaks better than I did, let me describe the ad. It's 60 seconds long. It's all black and white still photos. Now, in most of these ads, it'll show like, you know, like a bunch of refugees in some Latin American country or whatever. And the BOO will come in and say, Jesus was a refugee too. Tagline, he gets us. Basically, all the ads until this point had centered around the idea that whatever you're going through, whatever marginalized group you belong to, Jesus can sympathize with you. It's all a bunch of disingenuous bullshit designed to separate the image of Christianity from, you know, all the shit Christianity actually does in the world. But this second ad, they decided to break with that approach altogether and go with something worse. See, in this one, we just see 45 seconds worth of black and white photos of people yelling at each other, or in one case, punching each other. Now, some of these are just random fights captured on film, but in several instances, there's the, the photo itself gives you plenty of context that you know what the argument is about, right? One is a, a, a black man screaming at a cop who's wearing full riot gear. Another is an unmasked guy scream spitting into the face of a masked guy. Another one has a lady holding up a goddamn sign that says liberty over lockdown. And then this all fades away to a tagline that reads, Jesus loved the people we hate. He gets us. Gone is the message of Christ's relatability, the, the, the stated goal of the fucking campaign. This one wasn't about rehabilitating the reputation of Jesus. It was about rehabilitating the reputation of his shittiest adherents. It was a message of shame urging us to welcome back the people in our lives that intentionally endangered us and our children during a fucking pandemic. The people who endangered and continue to endanger the viability of our government through disinformation and obstinance. The people who felt that the appropriate response to the phrase Black Lives Matter was a counterpoint. Jesus would have forgiven these people, so, so why don't you, you selfish prick? Of course, since its inception, the group behind this campaign has tried to keep its donors a secret. Always the sign of a trustworthy endeavor there, right? But we're learning more and more about him. In November, Hobby Lobby's owner David Green admitted that his family were among the major contributors. Quick reminder, David Green's response to the lockdown was to try to keep his stores open regardless of local ordinances. And his justification for that was a prophetic dream that his wife had. Sent out a fucking company memo telling everyone that. In other words, he's exactly the kind of piece of shit person that this ad was meant to guilt you into forgiving. And that's what sits at the center of this whole nesting doll of grift. The campaign co-ops the language of social justice. It presents Jesus as a feminist and a supporter of refugees and a symbol of social reform, all in an effort to distance him from the homophobic, sexist racists that most people outside of Christianity associate him with. But the homophobic, sexist racists are the ones paying for the fucking ads. The people they're trying to distance their religion from are themselves. I, I mean, the only direct donor we know about is David Green, but he gets us as a subsidiary of a group called the Servant Foundation, and the Servant Foundation has given over $50 million to the goddamn Alliance Defending Freedom. Now, I'm, I'm sorry if I just tied too many pieces of yarn to the cork board at once here, but the Alliance Defending Freedom is basically the main fucking bad guy. They're the boss fight at the end of atheism. They're the legal group dedicated to stripping rights away from LGBTQ people and exempting Christians from all laws altogether. And they're winning. See, a, a lot of people responded to these ads by pointing out how many hungry people they could have fed and homeless people they could have housed with the $20 million that they spent airing these dumbass commercials. But that misses the point, right? Because if they had any inclination to use their money to help the downtrodden, they wouldn't have needed the campaign to begin with. If the people behind He Gets Us really wanted to rescue Christianity from its reputation of being a driver of homophobia that stands in opposition to social justice, they could just stop driving homophobia and opposing social justice. What they want to do instead is find the exact dollar amount it takes for people to keep ignoring that fact.